Boom! What's going on, everyone? I am Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill, and this is Toy Talk. In my last videos, we talked about the process to make a die-cast model car or truck. Today, we're going to pick up where we left off. As you recall, we started our conversations on what it takes to make a die-cast model car or truck with casting the metal parts. In part one, we talked about going from the raw metal to the painted castings. In part two, we talked about the plastic injection machine and the plastic parts. We also talked about the vacuum metalizing process. In part three, we talked about the wheels and the tires. Now, if you missed any of these parts, please go to my channel and find them. Also, please take time to like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get notified of all of my videos. And I've got a free report on resin versus diecast. It details what resin is, why you need resin in your collection, and why resin is taking over the limited mass-produced market. You can grab a copy of it down in the links in the description below me. Now, in today's topic, we're going to talk about window glass. And we'll get to that as soon as we roll this intro. Now the big question is this. Do you want a unique toy collection that is the envy of all your friends and fellow collectors worldwide? If so, you have come to the right place to learn about all things diecast and resin. Follow along as I talk about the latest and greatest releases from the top manufacturers in the industry that will make your collection stand out from all the rest. My name is Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skeel, and this is Toy Talk. Okay, today's topic is window glass, but before we get to that, I think we ought to go back and review all the machines that we've used so far in making our die-cast model car or truck. First, we started with the idea of what we wanted to make. Like Advantage Diecast, they had the idea of making a Chevrolet Bison because no one had made one before. So that was the idea. Then we now have to use many computer controlled machines. We have to use a 3D scanner, a rapid prototyper, several CNC milling mold cutters. We have to use a heat treating machine. We have to use an electric furnace to melt the metal. We have to use a high pressure die cast injection machine. Then we need a machine that will remove the sharp edges and smooth out the castings. Then we need an airbrush, spray booth, and a pad printing machine. Next, we'll need a plastic injection machine, and we'll need a vacuum plating chamber. <laughs> These are all the machines that we've used so far, and we haven't even finished making all of our parts yet. Now, of course, these machines also require operators, which is labor and that adds more cost to making any model that we want to see on the market. Now that we've reviewed all the machines that have been used so far, let's continue our discussion on today's topic. And what that is, is making the glass parts that are needed for our models. If you will remember, every part that's needed to make up a die-cast model car or truck has to have a mold. Windshields, front and side glass, and back glass are no exception to this. They have to have a mold made too. Now, to manufacture these parts, we have two choices of machines that we can use. Our first choice is this plastic injection machine over here, and we've used these before. Or we can use the vacuum forming machine over here. Now that's a new machine we haven't yet talked about at all. And those are the two machines that are available to us to make our glass. Now, We've already talked about the plastic injection machine. We did that back in part two of this series. So go see it in the links in the description below to get find that video direct and then catch up. In it, you will see an animation of a working plastic injection machine so you can see exactly how this machine works. Now, the first method to use to create our window glass is the plastic injection method. But before we can do this, we have to go to the CNC milling machine to carve out another mold because we've already made plastic molds. This is true, but these have to be a separate mold because we're using clear plastic to inject our windows in. 
the other mold was using colored plastic for colored parts. You can only inject one color at a time, therefore we have to make two separate molds, one for clear glass and one for colored parts. Next, we'll take and put that mold in our plastic injection machine, and then we'll use the clear plastic to make the clear windows. Now, inexpensive mass-produced cars and trucks such as Hot Wheels, they'll cast the windshield, the side windows, the back windows, all as one piece, just like this. You can see right here, you can see the front windshield, you can see the back window, and if this piece were to have side windows, they would be there. The other plastic that connects it is all hidden by the casting in the die cast body shell. This is great because this method saves time on assembly and it adds a little bit of structural support to the actual model, making it a little bit stronger. It's a win-win for everybody. Now, the inexpensive mass-produced runs that I'm talking about here are in 1,000 to 100,000 or more pieces. They're often made just like this. You'll see this, there's four parts. There's the die cast body shell. There's the clear glass part for the windows. There's the interior part. And then there's the undercarriage part. Now the undercarriage gets to the assembly line with the four tires and the two axles already put on it. To make assembly very fast, you just put four parts together and it's done. The more expensive die cast cars and trucks will often have an individual front windshield, side windows, and rear glass piece. Now this makes a much finer model, but it adds more assembly time, which is more cost to the manufacturer, hence more cost to the collector. But the added realism makes that model far more valuable. Now, our second way of manufacturing window glass is using the vacuum forming machine. Now, what is this machine? Hmm. Before we can answer that, we have to ask two other questions and answer them. The first one is, what is thermoforming? And the second one is, what is vacuum forming? Okay, first question, what is thermoforming? <laughs> thermoforming is a manufacturing process where a plastic sheet is heated to a pliable forming temperature, formed to a specific shape in a mold, and trimmed to create a usable product. Very simple. It's actually a very simple thing and the machines are either very simple or highly complex. Just depends on the type of machine that they want and the quantity they're using. Now, for the second question, what is vacuum forming? All right, vacuum forming is a simplified version of thermoforming. It's where a sheet of plastic is heated to a forming temperature, stretched onto a single surface mold, and forced against the mold by a vacuum. This process can be used to turn plastic sheets into permanent objects, such as the window glass for our models. Vacuum form products are all around us and impact our daily lives. And I'm willing to bet you most of the time you don't even know you've seen them. They range from simple blister packaging, which so many of our die cast model cars and trucks utilize, to your car's bumpers, all the way up to aircraft fighter cockpit canopies. Did you ever wonder how they made those canopies? It's pretty cool. They just use this vacuum forming process and they come out with a great canopy for a fighter aircraft. Now, another extensive use of vacuum forming is in prototype creation for products that will be made utilizing other processes. Because it is relatively inexpensive to make a few pieces this way. Now, how does this process work? Believe it or not, the air around you is used as a tool. We heat a sheet of plastic to a pliable forming temperature. Then we remove the air forming a vacuum underneath that plastic sheet. Air pressure pushes on the outside of the plastic sheet. The weight, atmospheric pressure of the air, then pushes the plastic into the mold cavity in the case of a negative mold, or over the mold cavity in the case of a positive mold. Now over here is a perfect example of a negative mold. You can see the heated sheet right there, and it's ready to be formed. Then over here you can see how it is pulled down inside the mold. That's a negative mold. Over here you can see a positive mold. You can see how it sticks up, 
there's the heated plastic sheet, and then they pull it down over top of the mold instead of inside the mold. That's a positive mold. Now they utilize both types of molds depending on the structure that they need in the part they're creating because they both lend to thinner plastic in different areas on the part. Anyway, back to the process that we're at hand. We have our plastic sheet pulled down over our mold or into our mold at this point. Next, we let that plastic cool and that makes it harden. Then the hardened plastic is taken out of the mold and the excess plastic is trimmed off. This is done either by hand or with a CNC machine. De that depends on how many are being done. If we're just doing a few, it's simply not worth setting up a CNC process to do it. But if we're going into production level, we'll use a CNC machine because it's far more efficient than doing it by hand. Now, once the excess is trimmed off, we have our plastic parts. We take these windshields and we send them straight on down to our assembly line where they'll be put in by hand on the assembly line. Now, the vacuum formed windows will give our models a super crystal clear glass window for added realism. Now, don't you want greater detail in your models? Of course you do, we all do, even me. Unfortunately, detail costs money. More detail costs the manufacturers more money to produce the model which is passed on to the collector. But more detail makes a much better model. After all, remember the old days of Winross, they had no detail at all, very cheap to manufacture. But we want today all that detail. We want our vehicles to have interiors. We want them to have glass and all the gingerbread parts to make them look just like the real thing. All that costs money, but in the end of the day, it's well worth it because we have a model that looks just like the real thing. Advantage Diecast used the vacuum form method to make the glass for all of their products. They made it for their Chevrolet Bison. They made it for their Chevy C65 flatbed and their Chevrolet's Titan 90 cab overs. This glass gave a very, very super clear view inside the vehicles and each window was meticulously hand put inside the cab on the assembly line, just like the real ones that GM made years and years ago. Now, let's recap what we've talked about today. To summarize, we've learned the two different processes that are used to manufacture glass for our models. We talked about the plastic injection machine over here, and we talked about the vacuum forming machine over here. For mass produced runs, we typically will use a plastic injection machine because it is good for high quantity numbers. And usually they'll inject the glass as one part, all pieces of the glass, front windshield, back windshield. That'll be all one part. For more expensive models, having limited runs, they'll use the vacuum forming method to create the clear glass for the models. Next in my series, I'm going to talk about making the headlights, the taillights, the marker lights, and if these models need it, the light bars. So stay tuned. It'll be out next Thursday. Also, for the collectors out there, please go down and grab my free report on resin versus diecast. It details exactly what resin is, why resin is taking over the mass-produced market, and why you should have some resin collectibles in your collection. Get it in the links down in the description below. And as always, please like, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell to get notified of all of my videos. And if you know somebody who would really enjoy this, please share it with them. Thanks for watching. I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skeel, and this is Toy Talk.